The EU is creating a new vaccine passport that will effectively separate people into two groups, the vaccinated and the non-vaccinated. One group will be able to travel and the other will not. If you live in Europe, chances are over the last year that you've heard your government talk about testing people for COVID-19 before they went on flights, which is kind of reasonable, right? But this is a whole other beast. This new vaccine passport will ensure that even if you don't have COVID but you haven't been vaccinated, you still won't be able to go anywhere. Do you remember voting for this? Do you, do you remember kind of approving this? No? Well, that's because most individual countries in Europe could not convince its people that they should accept something like this. So now the EU took it into their own hands because they don't actually need you to vote for anything. They can just pass a law and make it apply to your country. The irony here, of course, is that you could probably still infect people with the virus even after you've been vaccinated. Which is the point that both Angela Merkel of Germany and Emmanuel Macron of France are making in this article. Take a look at this, guys. Vaccinated certificates could be available within three months, says EU chief. So we should all get really excited. Ursula von der Leyen was speaking at a press conference in Brussels Thursday after a virtual meeting of the continent's leaders where she said that a document saying whether citizens have been inoculated or not could be put to use soon. So whether or not you like it, it seems to be coming. And I am wondering how the EU is, is uh, doing this project without the apparent support of, of France and Germany who typically lead big projects within the EU. Uh, they seem very critical about this whole idea and project, at least until very recently. Take a look at these uh, quotes in these, in these interviews. First, it must be actually clearly resolved that vaccinated people are no longer infectious, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said in an interview published Thursday in the Daily Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. As long as the number of those who have been vaccinated is still so much smaller than the number who are waiting for vaccination, the state should not treat the two groups differently. Macron said this, I feel that there is a lot of confusion sometimes on this subject. Um, speaking at a press conference after the summit on Thursday, if we manage to reopen certain places, we cannot condition their access to vaccination, even though we would not even have opened vaccination to the youngest. I think they both make a really good point here. You don't want to separate people into two different groups based on who's been vaccinated and who hasn't been vaccinated, especially when you don't even know yet if the vaccination actually prevents you from giving the virus to, to, uh, to other people. Speaking of the vac vaccine, there's something interesting happening in France these days. Both France and Germany uh, have, a, have historically had a very high skeptical level of vaccines because they've had a few uh, incidents in the past with vaccines that didn't really work out. So the people have a very high level of skepticism when it comes to vaccines uh, and they have good reasons to have one, right? Leaders of your country should, should represent the voice of the people. So Macron recently has also carried over the skepticism, uh, especially when it comes to the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine but something changed recently where he had a complete turnaround for for some reason take a look at this it was just a month ago that french president emmanuel macron said the oxford estra seneca vaccine was almost ineffective in the over 65s his europe minister then accused the uk of taking massive risks by depending too heavily on its homegrown jab, Mr. Macron has now said that he would happily receive the AstraZeneca vaccine if that was what he was offered. His government also announced an apparent U-turn by approving the jab for some older people. So what has changed? And that is a really good question. Without speculating too much, you can assume that there's a lot of financial and political pressure on these political leaders to accept things that their people wouldn't accept by themselves. We're living in a really weird time. It, it seems like a lot of our freedoms are eroding during this pandemic and we can't really, like people like you and I, can't really do a lot about it. The people protesting across Europe against further restrictions are ironically being shut down by more restrictions by literal curfews.
Denmark, my freedom-loving country, just passed permanent emergency pandemic laws that will allow the government to force treat and force isolate people. When it comes to these vaccines, I don't think anyone should be forced to take it. But now there are consequences if you refuse to take it. And I think that's a very dangerous precedence to set. That you can't actually leave your country anymore. But now you know about the Eurowide vaccine passport. I tried to do my part. If you want to help me out, you can share this video to get the information out to more people and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Remember to comment with your opinions in the comment section and have a great day.